Yes. Thank you. So, welcome, Yuzi, to this uh, forenoon session. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, the speaker is Yuji Tachikawa, and he will tell us about interlocutor cyborg duality. Please go ahead. You have uh, 25 minutes for talk and five minutes. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, nice conference. So today I'd like to talk about uh, how to match uh, higher symmetries across interrelated Zyber duality. So this work is done in collaboration with two fantastic colleagues of mine, uh, Yasunori Lee and Kantaro Omori. So Kantaro Omori was in United States for a while and he's now back in Hong Kong as an assistant professor. Yasunori Lee is my student and he's applying this year uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. So uh, please understand what I mean by that. Yes. Okay, so uh, what we did was to study uh, higher symmetries. So these are one form of symmetries, two groups, and their anomalies, and how they match across a certain four dimensional uh, n equals one supersymmetric duality originally found by Intrigate and Zyberg. So that's just a standard Zyberg duality between SO. Uh, gauge group with a sub number of flavors. So when the flavor is 2NF, then the number of colors is changed to from 2NC to 2NF minus 2NC plus four. So that's found long time ago. So we are revisiting this old duality from a new point of view. So that's what we did. So let me begin by reminding you about higher symmetries. Uh, P form symmetry is a kind of a symmetry, generalized type of symmetry, which acts on p-dimensional objects. So zero form symmetry is the ordinary symmetry, and they are carried by, I mean, the charges under zero form symmetries are carried by a zero dimensional operator, so point operators. And in four dimensions, in four space-time dimensions, you can consider a three dimensional wall, uh, which implements a group operation G, so when you cross, when, the, when an operator, point operator crosses this wall, uh, you get an action of G upon the operator O. So that's the ordinary symmetry. Now you can consider a higher symmetry, which is a, uh, for example, let's consider one form symmetry. So that's carried by a line operator, such as Wilson lines and Tohoft lines. And in that case, group operation is performed by a two-dimensional surface. And if you cross, if a line operator cross uh, such a two-dimensional wall, then a certain operation is done. So that's how one form symmetry operator acts on a line charged under one form symmetry. So uh, this was formulated uh, nicely by Guy Otto Kapustin and Zabin Willett in 2014. So let's have an example. So you consider pure SO2N gauge theory. And it, this system has uh, two one form symmetries. One one form symmetry is electric Z2 one form symmetry. So in that case, the charged objects are Wilson lines. And uh, there is an element minus one, diagonal uh, matrix minus one in SO2N. And it can act either as plus one or minus one on a representation R of SO2N. So Wilson lines in a representation such that the minus one of SO2N acts as minus one has a charge, well, minus one, or well, charge uh, one, uh, if we use additive normalization. So that's the electric one form symmetry. On the other hand, uh, magnetic uh, Z2 one form symmetry is carried by Tohoft loops, Tohoft lines in uh, SO gauge theory. So the Z2 charge can be measured by integrating the stiefel fitney class of uh, the sphere surrounding the line. So this stiefel fitney class controls whether a SO2N gauge bundle can be lifted to spin 2N bundle or not. So let's play some game using this one form symmetry. So SO2N theory has this magnetic Z2 one form symmetry which, I, as I said, measures this uh, stiefel fitney class. So let's gauge this Z2 one form symmetry. So if you gauge a symmetry, charged operators disappear. 
This means that charged lines with non-zero stiffer fitting class disappear. This means that uh, by definition of the stiffer fitting class, all configurations, all gauge configurations in such a gauged theory is in fact diffable to spin 2n. Therefore, it essentially becomes spin 2n theory. Now let's next consider a pure spin 2n theory. Uh, and this has, theory has a center symmetry. So that's a type of one form symmetry, and that's given by Z2 type Z2 when n is even. So when 2n is a multiple of four, and it's given by Z4 when uh, n is odd. So what does it mean? So this is because uh, if you can consider Wilson line in a spin representation, and you take two Wilson lines in the spin representation, you take the product. When n is even, spin type spin contains a singlet, while uh, when n is odd, spin times spin contains vector representation. Because of that, spin generates Z2 subgroup in the n even case, but spin generates a Z4, the entire Z4 in the vector case. So that's why the parity of n affects the center of spin to n. I have a so, question. Yes, please. So why are they called one form symmetries? What is the origin of the one form business? Uh, I don't like this name either. <laughs> um, so when you consider continuous symmetry, such as U1 symmetry, then the background field for one form symmetry or zero form symmetry uh, corresponds to formal fields, right? So differential forms can, can be classified into zero form, one form, two form, etc. So that's the origin of the this strange uh, terminology p form symmetry. I, I prefer just calling them p symmetries. But but so the U, I mean, U, you ordinary U one symmetry would be a zero form symmetry, or that's right. That's right. Ordinary symmetry is a zero form. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Ah. Okay. So. Let me summarize what I told you. So I was just reviewing one form of symmetry. Um, so in the SO2N symmetry, sorry, SO2N gauge theory, the one form of symmetries are either Z2 times Z2, I mean, always Z2 times Z2. In the case of spin 2 n theory, the one form of symmetry is Z2 times Z2 or Z4, right? And these two setups are exchanged by gauging Z2. So as I, I, as I explained, when the Z2 one form symmetry was gauged in SO2N uh, gauge theory, uh, you get spin 2N theory. So these four cases are related to each other. I didn't have time to explain that uh, Z2 times Z2 one form symmetry of SO2N gauge theory, uh, in fact, has a different anomaly depending on whether N is even or odd. Uh, but that's something uh, you might want to know. So that's what I re reviewed about one form symmetry. Let's move on to a more complicated type of higher symmetry, which is called two group, right? So we know that zero form symmetry or ordinary symmetry can be extended, right? So G is a symmetry group, H is a symmetry group, and it can have a non-trivial extension. Um, now, we now know that one form symmetry and zero form symmetry can also mix into a more complicated object. So zero form symmetry can be extended by a one form symmetry to uh, become something more intricate. People call it two groups. Again, that's a convention, unfortunately. I don't know why this is not called one group, but people decided to call it two groups. So the Foldy gauge theory example with non-trivial two-group symmetry was first found by uh, Poshen Shin and Ho Tat Lan last summer. So let me describe this example. So we just consider spin two end gauge theory, just like before, but we add uh, two NF flavors of scalar fields in the vector representation. So it has SU2NF flavor symmetry, right? What's the one form symmetry? 
So one form symmetry is carried by line operators, Wilson lines. And as I said, spin uh, center of the spin group is either Z2 times Z2 or Z4, right? So in particular, I said that spinner times spinner becomes a vector in the latter case when N is odd. But here we are introducing uh, dynamical matter fields in the vector representation of the gauge field. So this resulting Wilson line in the vector, rep vector representation can be screened by dynamical particles in the vector representation. So this is essentially trivial. This means that uh, at this level of neglecting the flavor symmetry, um, the remaining one form of symmetry is just Z2 because Wilson lines in the vector representation is screened in any case. However, things become more interesting if you remember the existence of flavor symmetry. That is because of the following. You see, you have a vector representation Wilson line, and you try to screen it by using the dynamical particle, which has vector representation under the gauge group. But the only dynamical field uh, is just a vector is just a scalar field in the vector representation of the gauge theory, but in the uh, fundamental representation of the flavor symmetry. Therefore, you always have a fundamental charge. So what happens is that uh, what happens is that when n c is odd, you start by thinking what happens if you take two co copies of Wilson lines is a spinner representation. This essentially becomes vector representation Wilson line, and you try to screen it by dynamical particle. But that process inevitably assigns a flavor fundamental representation to the line operator. Therefore, you can still distinguish uh, the Wilson line in the vector representation even after taking into account the screening by the dynamical particle by just looking at the flavor symmetry. So this means that uh, one form symmetry and zero form symmetry are intrinsically mixed when NC is odd, while it is still separate when NC is even. So such a mixture of one form symmetry and zero form symmetry is called two groups, as I said. So formalizing it mathematically is a bit tiresome, but let me try using just the one single slide. So you see, start, we start from SC2NF flavor symmetry. So that's an ordinary zero form symmetry. But suppose you kind of gauge, then you still can consider a center symmetry or coming from that center of SC2NF. So let's just take Z2 subgroup of that center. Under that Z2 subgroup, which is generated by just minus one in SC2NF, then the <laughs> flavor fundamental Wilson line is still charged under the, this flavor Z to one form symmetry. So what happens in this gauge theory example is that the flavor, I mean, electric Z to one form symmetry and flavor Z to one form symmetry extracted from flavor zero form symmetry are mixed and becomes Z4 in the case NC is odd while they remain separate when NC is even. So that's how, uh, ordinary symmetry, zero form symmetry, and the one form symmetry are mixed in this example. Right. So, so far I didn't consider any supersymmetry. So let's try to mix in the integrator Zyberg duality. So that was a duality found in 1995 between four dimensional uh, N equals one gauge theory, N equals one supersymmetry gauge theory with uh, SO2NC a gauge group with two NF flavors and the dual is this. So there are many checks of the duality in the past 25 years. There are many checks. Zero form symmetries match, anomaly polynomial match, super conformal index match. So you want to ask how about the global form of the gauge group or about two groups, right? So an early work 
right after the original paper by Intrigue and Zeiberg by Mark Strassler, suggested that SO group and S spin group were exchanged under the duality. That didn't quite uncover the whole story. Um, so what he did was to consider a duality, more sophisticated duality with dynamical quarks in the spinner representation. But here you can take the decoupling limit. So, and you can try to understand what is going on by studying how duality acts on the line of parameters. So that was done in my paper with Aharoni and Zaiba in uh, 2013. So what that shows is that there are in fact three types of SOQCD. One is a spin gauge theory, another is a SO plus gauge theory, and the final one is the SO minus gauge theory. So the spin theory has a Wilson line, SO plus theory has a Tohoft line, and SO minus theory has a mixture of them, so that it has a dionic line. So that's the distinction. And as a duality, Higgs vacua and confined vacua are exchanged. And in the Higgs vacua, uh, Wilson line have perimeter law, Tohoft line have area law, and dionic line have area law. In the confined vacua, we have area law for the Wilson line. And uh, because in the intricate type of duality, uh, there's an oblique confinement in the, instead of the standard confinement. Therefore, the whole line still has area law, while dionic line has perimeter. This means that three choices are interchanged in this way under the duality. So summarizing, if we are careful about the global structure of the gauge group, uh, the intricate Zyberg duality acts in this way. SO plus is mapped to SO plus, while spin theory and SO minus theory are exchanged. So this was tested by superconformal index using uh, using superconformal index uh, by Raza, Matt, and Villet. So it, this paper is very nice because it has mathematical notebook where you can just plug in NC and NF and compute long expressions and you can directly see that the duality works. So the question today is whether the two group structure agree or not. So let's come to the uh, crucial point. So how does the higher symmetry act across duality? To do that, we need to remind, <coughs> excuse me, what happens in the case of spin 2NF theory with 2NF flavors. So in fact, we already saw what happens in this case because uh, the example by uh, Sing and Lam was with uh, matter fields in the scalar, uh, sorry, ma matter, scalar matter fields. But here we are putting both fermion fields and scalar fields, but essentially the argument is the same. So to see whether the symmetry, one form symmetry and zero form symmetry combines, what you do is to take two Wilson lines, non trivial Wilson lines, combine them and to see if the resulting line is non-trivial under uh, the flavor symmetry. So let's do that again. So we start from a gauge spinner with line. You take the two of them and fuse them. So you take the tensor product of the representations. In one case, you get the gauge singlet. So that's when NC is even. But when NC is odd, you get the gauge vector representation. Now you can try to screen it by the dynamical uh, field, which is charged under the vector representation of spin group and the fundamental representation of the flavor group. So in this case, uh, we see that the one form of symmetry, Z to one form of symmetry of spin to NC theory is mixed non-trivially with the flavor symmetry. So we find that when NC is even, zero form and one form symmetries remain direct product, while when NC is odd, they form non-trivial two group. 
right? So, so far we get this result. You see, what we want to know is how the two group structure matches across the Zyberg duality. So I there are three choices. Yes, please. When you say gauge spinner Wilson line, do you mean that when you evaluate the Wilson line, you get a spinner or something? Ah, is that what I, you're I, saying? Uh, what I'm saying is that you can consider Wilson lines in various representations, right? You just insert a uh, Wilson line operator in your path integral, right? But yeah. you can use fundamental representation or vector representation or spinner representation when you take the trace. So that's just what gauge spinner represent spinner Wilson line means. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Yeah. So you just insert a trace over the spin representation of yeah, your when you have the spin BX. representation, I guess you have the gamma matrices uh, in the in the matrices, right? You have the yeah, yeah, yeah. Spinner. right, right. Uh, yeah, but okay. that spinner is the spinner of the a gauge group, not the space time. So that's yeah, the yeah, confusing yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. So uh, what, what I said is that uh, one form and zero form remain just a direct product when NC is even. And uh, when NC is odd, they form a non trivial two group. So we filled in this, these portions of the entries. And the intricate Zyberg duality acts as this and exchanges spin and SO minus and keeps SO plus. That's complicated, so I just drew it for you. So the duality acts in this way. So what we want to do is to fill in the other entries, right? And to see whether it is compatible with the two group structure. So we need to understand the two group structure in the SO2 and C theory. So how do we do that? What we do is simple. Um, again, all we have to do is to take the product of two non-trivial line operators and to see whether you have a non-trivial flavor charge after the dynamical screen. So let's start by forgetting about the flavor's image, right? So what we do is to start from a charge one to Hoch line, which is non-trivial. You take the two, you fuse them. So you get the single to Hoch line, but with magnetic charge two. It has the same magnetic charge as a dynamical monopole in this theory. Therefore, it can be screened and it becomes a trivial line. As long as you forget about neglect the flavor's image. But the important point is that the dynamical monopole can have non-trivial uh, flavor charge. Therefore, uh, Z to one form symmetry of SO theory and the flavor zero form symmetry uh, remain a direct product or are combined into a non-trivial two group, depending on whether the dynamical monopole has charge plus one or charge minus one under the minus one of the flavor symmetry SU2 and F. So that's what you have to study. So the point is that there can be ferromagnetic zero modes on dynamical monopoles, which can potentially induce flavor charge on the monopoles. So a famous example of that is N equals two supersymmetric SC2 theory with NF flavors, originally studied by Zyberg and Witten. So in that case, each monopole carries ferromagnetic zero modes, uh, one from each flavor. So it, it, it's a zero mode of psi where I runs from one to two NF. And they are quantized into uh, anti-commuting operators. Therefore, it behaves as gamma matrices of the flavor symmetry, uh, which in the N equals two supersymmetric case is just SO. Therefore, the monopole transform in the spinner of the flavor symmetry. So that fact played a rather important role in the original development of the zyberg witten theory. And our situation is similar. So the entire question now boiled down to the following. In the SO2 NC theory with 2NF flavors, how do dynamical monopoles transform under the minus one uh, element, the center element of the flavor symmetry? The way to answer it is quite fun in itself. 
but I cannot go into detail. I don't have time. And also, such a computation, uh, I mean, the way to do such a computation was developed a long time ago uh, in the 80s, I think. So if you are doing this business for long enough, this is something uh, you can do by just looking up all the papers. So I can summarize it in one page. So uh, non-Abelian theory itself is rather hard to analyze. So you add some scalar fields to break the gauge group SO2 and C to SO2 to power NC by introducing adjoint scalar and giving a generic VEV. So you just have Tohoku polyacre monopole whose zero modes can be found by Kalias index theorem. And the result is that the flavor charge of the monopole is minus one to the NF in the SO2 NC plus theory and minus one to the power NF plus NC for the SO2 NC minus theory. As I told you, this determines whether zero form and one form remains direct product or they become non-trivial two group. So I, I already told you this entry for spin gauge theory. And in the SO plus gauge theory, as I said, oops, it depends on just NF, right? Therefore, when NF is odd, you have two group. And in the case of SO minus theory, the result depends on NF plus NC. So when the sum of NAC and NF is odd, you get two non-trivial two group, and otherwise you have to product. So do they match nice? Do they map nicely under the duality? Yes, this is how the duality is supposed to act, and two group are mapped to two group, two group are always mapped to two group, and direct product are mapped to direct product. So everything is going all right. So let me summarize. So I just reviewed one form of symmetries and also two groups. And we studied them in the case of SO2NC gauge theory with 2NF family and flavors. And they are mapped as expected under the integrated Zyberg duality. I only had time to explain how symmetries match and not how the anomalies of these symmetries match. Actually, the anomalies also match. And if you're interested, you can have a look at our paper. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuzi, for the nice talk. We have mm -hmm. time for a couple of short questions. Yes, please. Uh, hi, I have a question. Yes, um, please. So uh, you spoke of one form symmetries, uh, right? So yes. uh, zero form symmetries, I, mean, I, I know at least in two dimensions, like one has uh, top uh, topological defects, which are uh, non-invertible. Uh, so, right. so this one form symmetry, non-invertible version in these theories, uh, can they be studied similarly? Uh, I, I think you can. Um, I don't know of any, uh, non invertible one form symmetry operator in four dimensional theory. At least in my example, uh, all mm -hmm. symmetries are invertible symmetries. Uh, so far, nice. non invertible symmetries are mainly studied in two dimensions. Yeah, right. Very recently, there are a few non trivial, sorry, non invertible symmetries studied in higher dimensions, yeah. but I think they are all zero form symmetries. So it will be very interesting to study uh, non-invertible one-form symmetry. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Izzy, for the uh, exceptionally good talk. And uh, thank you very much. Okay. This is time to move on to the second talk of the.